Yes, I need a haircut. Ugh. All right, hi, I'm David. I want to do another video today talking a little bit about MCU issues that especially affects older Model S and Model X, pretty much everything that came out before 2018. I had these issues with my MCU and I found uh, Tony that was helping me fix this, uh, replacing the chip. Uh, back then I didn't really have time to do a video, it was kind of rushed and everything. Uh, but I thought it's an issue that you know a lot of people will have or already have and it's worth making a video about it. So I set up a little interview video with Tony. Uh, unfortunately the audio quality isn't quite as good as I wanted it to be but you know I found out days later when I put the video together and um, so I apologize for that. But um, I hope you find this uh, useful. We'll have some links and everything in the description um, how to fix this and how to go about it. And we're going to do a second video where we're going to uh, show you a little more detail how to do the removal of the MCU and get to the chip. Today I want to do a video that I should have done a few months ago. Um, Tony helped me with an issue that I had with my car with the MCU. And um, we kind of did it really quick. And uh, we, there wasn't really a way to do it. So we're, we decided to kind of actually go in and do a real video. Because the issue that uh, um, we want to talk about is actually something that is not happening here and there to some cars it's going to happen to every single car up to 2000 April 2018 is when the new MCU came out so those cars are going to be a little bit different because yeah. those cars are the ones that have the Netflix uh, you can identify that easily so if you have the older MCU which doesn't have the Netflix ability in some of the newer games then you're going to have one of these issues that David had encountered yeah so I had an issue my MCU was kind of acting up some text was kind of odd and and sometimes it would just reboot, my Bluetooth connection issues. And um, so the underlying problem is not that the actual LCU, MCU is totally going bad, it's just one little chip, right? Co correct, there's one little chip in there that's basically the hard drive for the MCU. Now, uh, that chip has a finite amount of cycles that it can write to it. And uh, the Tesla, as it's uh, running, it's going to write files when you're listening to music, it's gonna cache music on your chip. Um, when you're driving around, it's gonna cap, it's gonna write logs up all the data, uh, like you know your speed, where you are, Etc. All that kind of information, temperature. So all the stuff gets written to the chip, and it keeps writing and writing and writing as you're using it. And simply, after several years, that chip is going to wear out. Okay, and that's kind of what happened to mine. And it's not something that happens like it's like an on and off. It's kind of like sectors go bad, and then sometimes you see these issues that I had. Yeah. So it, it goes. It kind of happens over time. So as you're using it, the MCU uh, certain sectors will go bad faster because it kind of depends on how. The, how often the files are changing and stuff like this. One of the really often times that MCU will start going bad is during updates because oh. at that time when uh, update comes down, uh, it writes in a large file and if any part of that large file gets written into these bad sectors, then it's going to have troubles trying to install. Okay. Um, sometimes people are going to notice that their car gets an update and they can't install and they may have to try to download it several times. Okay, yeah. And I think we actually had a car just recently that did an upgrade and then it kind of <laughs> went black. <laughs> Correct, yeah. It, it, I often, unfortunately, get a lot of calls where people just got an update and then their MCU died uh, because the chip was worn out. A lot of times people thought that, oh, maybe it was the update that uh, killed the MCU. Well, yes and no. Um, it happened at the time of the update, but it's not the actual software on the update that causes it to die. It's just that it happened to write into areas where the chip was failing and after it wrote the data, it could no longer read it. Okay. So basically, it is is a hardware failure on that. Um, and you said uh, 2018 they changed that, so they fixed that. Um, but anything before that is going to have that issue. It's not a matter, as you say, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of time when it's gonna happen. Correct, it's yeah. a matter of when. So a couple other things. Um, Tesla also, uh, early or late last year, they, in one of the updates, made some changes to the logging so that it only logs when you drive. Okay. In the past, it used to log 24-7. So right with that, that's gonna help uh, a lot of the MCUs. Okay. However, as a side effect, there was a lot of damage that was done early. So if your car is older and you had a lot of the older soft, you had your car running the older software until prior of late last year, mm -hmm. that damage, once it's done, 
it, it's done. Yeah. So what happens now is it's going to be later when your MCU is going to die, and <laughs> it may happen when you're out of warranty. Oh yeah, yeah. I was out of warranty on mine. I actually was out of warranty very quickly because I drive so much. Um, but thankfully, I was able to to restore it and. Um, I can say that it made a night and day difference. Like all the issues were gone um, and it's running really fine. The other thing that um, is important, I think you're using number one, a larger chip and you're using a higher quality chip. Correct. What, uh, what difference is there? Is there? Correct. So the chip that we use is four times larger. Uh, it's a 32 gig chip instead of the original eight gig. We also put the chip into an endurance mode, which makes it last a lot longer. Because of that, it loses half the space, so it's only 16 gigabytes. But um, instead of being uh, double the um, amount of space to write, yeah. because it's endurance mode, it actually increases by seven times. Oh, so okay. you do lose half the space, but you gain an additional yeah. six times of endurance. So it's actually much better like right. that. But the original is eight anyway, so that's enough. You know, so. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not compromising in any way. Exactly, it's yeah. not. The, the car only needs eight to run, and uh, Tesla can't do anything other than eight because most of the cars are going to have eight. So we really only need that eight. The extra eight that's on there is also used for the chip to wear level, so it'll write across that. So not only do you have this uh, chip that writes seven times longer now because of 16 gigs, it's still twice as big. So you're actually going to have about 14 times the endurance of the original chip. Oh, so wow. the original chips typically last somewhere around two to eight years. Okay. And you take that and you multiply that by 14. This basically is going to be the last chip that you need to get for your car. <laughs> Everything else is going to be needing to be replaced yeah. before you need this again. All right, okay, let's talk a little bit about what is happening to the MCU. What are the symptoms of that failure? And um, I think it's important to catch it early on because if it's too late, you might not be able to recover everything. Yeah. So maybe let's go through the list of what um, what are the common issues. Sure. A lot of the common issues are uh, the Bluetooth may not work. Your calls may get dropped a lot even though you have signal. Or you may be driving and all of a sudden you don't have uh, signal, 3G exactly. or LTE, That's where you idea. generally do because uh, you know, you're know you familiar with the area and you know you should have that signal there. Um, other things happen. Your MCU may need to be rebooted. Like one a day. Right. Uh, you know, some of my extreme cases, I had some customers who they had to reboot their MCU first thing every morning in order for their, their car to work smoothly. Now, these cars, the MCU is on a Linux uh, operating system, and generally those are really stable. Yes. And you really should not need to be rebooting them very often. You know, like maybe once every one, two, or three months, that may be normal. But, you know, if you start getting to the point where you have to reboot it, like maybe once a week or more frequently like that, then, you know, that's a really strong sign that uh, your EMC is starting to fail. A lot of it is time, too. So, you know, if your car is over several years old, then uh, it, it, it's a pretty good chance that it's starting to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of new owners may not have had their car since new, so they don't know what the MCU um, originally felt like. Yes. Uh, one of the big things is a lot of people will associate that because the car is old, Older and the firm, the software keeps updating that they think that it's normal for the MC to run oh, slow, okay. but it's not. Uh, you know, as David noticed, after I changed his chip, it, it was a night and day difference of him using his MCU. And, and I saw that decline in performance, and I thought, oh, they they ask more of the MCU, but it really wasn't. It was just the MCU, like you know, the chip kind of failing. Yeah, one of the side effects is as the chip wears out, it slows down, so yeah. it, it's not able to read and write as fast. So that, that's what makes a lot of the performance really sluggish yeah. as the MCU ages. But the chip, you know, totally refreshes that. Awesome. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show um, in a second video, because I don't want to make this too long, uh, show how to take the MCU out, take that board out where the chip is on, and you can send that to Tony if you can uh, put the new chip on with the original software that you had. So basically your car looks exactly like it is, but with a new chip. And... Um, so we're going to show you how to take the MCU out, do all that, and put it back together. But that's going to be the next video, and, and um, yeah. Um. In, in, the, in this video, uh, we're also going to include a link that you can go on a page I maintain. That's going to contain all the details of how to spot when your MCU is going back. So you know, make sure to check that out, because you really want to do this repair before it goes bad, because there are a couple of key files that are specific to your car. 
and I need to get those files in order to restore the full functionality for you. If you come to me with your MCU once it's blacked out, there's a chance that those files are gone, and once those files are gone, I can still re restore your car to a fully working state, but you're gonna lose a lot of the online features like being able to use your app. You're not going to know where your car is. You're not going to be able to unlock your car. You can't uh, remotely start your car. You know, all, all those kinds of things that you do on your mobile phone, you're not going to be able to do. Okay, um, okay cool. Um, that's a good thing with the link. Yeah, that's that's definitely because there, we talk about a few things, but there's a lot of things that, um, that, that show that the chips are failing. Uh, so we're going to show how to take out all the things and then send it to him. If you are un familiar with working on cars or uncomfortable with working the cars and you kind of live in Southern California or in the West Coast, um, you can uh, contact me. I might be able to come to you, um, do all that work, take it out, bring it to Tony and bring it back and put your car back together. Obviously that's a distance thing, but um, that's something that I've been doing here in Southern California for several customers and we kind of team up on that a little bit. All right, let's get going. Thank you. Thanks.